Rita from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm back on schedule after all that wedding stuff for my Monday this and that. And one of the things I'll be talking about today are the wedding updates and sharing a few of the pictures that we have. Obviously, we don't have all the professional ones, but we have a few snapshots I can share with you. And plus a bunch of other stuff. So if you're new to my channel and don't know what a this and that video is, it's just a weekly vlog I do where I talk about many different topics, giving you updates, telling you about videos that are coming out soon, leading you back to old videos, or just showing you some of the basic things I'm doing today or this week. So let's get busy on the topics of today. So the wedding, it really turned out beautiful. The venue was wonderful. Here's a picture of what it looks like. You can see the wedding arch way towards the back that Patrick had built and he has a video on how he did that that I'll link to in the description box down below. But uh, anyway, just beautiful, loved it. And uh, every, everything just went wonderfully. This picture here is of Justin, our son that we just married off with most of his uh, groomsmen plus the guy in the front he's the one officiated the wedding they were they've all been friends since childhood but anyway we had a wonderful time family came from quite a distance away and stayed for the whole weekend since the wedding was on a friday it worked out really good so we had we had all day Saturday just to hang with family, including Justin and Marlene, because they didn't leave for their honeymoon until Monday. And so we got to really just have this full day with all this leftover food from the catering for the wedding itself that we just ate. In fact, Patrick and I have been eating on that food ever since. There's so much of it. But anyway, it was just it was just wonderful. We had such a great time with family and and with Justin's buddies that that some of them had come all the way up from California and the rehearsal dinner by the way was here in that big room where I shoot some of my videos and I also have a video about it used to be my dance and martial arts studio but it's since been converted to an everything else room. I'll go ahead and link you down below to the video I did on that if you're just curious cuz it is a good size room but makes a great hangout room for things like having a rehearsal dinner parties and so on so we did the rehearsal dinner here and then we also had all the family came come over and we all hung out in that room and played games and just had a good old time so it was it was really wonderful so thank you to all those who remembered and have been asking how it went and and all your prayers and well wishes and stuff it was just it was really great Okay, so moving on to some other topics. So right here is my skin cream. Now, I make and sell this skin cream and I also have videos on how to make it yourself for those who would rather do it yourself, so I do both. But I wanted to mention this because not only do I need to get a bunch more made up for my store, I, I sell it in tins, I don't sell it. This is just what I use for myself. But it's labeled as a skin cream, not a face cream, because it is a multi-purpose, as is listed in the description of the item on our store. So I wanted to cover a couple of things that um, I do use it on my face. It's all I've used on my face as a skin cream for quite a few years, and I love it. And uh, I use it for many other things, though. Yes, it can be used as a topical treatment for minor abrasions, cuts, things like that. Anything is minor. I've used it quite often for that. I've used it in places where my skin is very, very dry, like on my heels, my knees, my elbows, even on my hands. Uh, I've used it as a makeup remover. And... More recently, I've started using it as a leave-in treatment on my hair to help prevent it. Because, you know, some of you have been following me for a while know that my hair can get pretty big, pretty fly away. And so after I wash my hair, I just take a little dab of it, rub it into my hands, and then put it mostly from here down to help prevent the flyaways and just give it that extra protection and conditioning. And I'm really loving it for that. So if you have really dry hair like I do and you're making or buying the skin cream, it's another option that you can use it for. Oh, also makes great lip balm. So some people who find it too heavy for their face can still use it for its many other purposes. All right, now let's talk about gar more garden related stuff. So as you can see behind me, yeah, I got a lot of zucchini and this is after giving a bunch away and uh, just really trying to work through it. Well, I've been waiting until after the wedding. I mentioned in my last this and that video that I was going to make the mock pineapple and 
also try doing the same idea with the black cherry so I can have a mock black cherry and can it up. Now, people keep asking me for recipes, but I've never done it. So I've already looked at different recipes and I'm going to do a little bit, you know, especially the black cherry. Nobody that I know of has a recipe on that. This was just an idea I had, but I'll be basing it off the mock pineapple or the pineapple zucchini and using that same idea, but I'll play around with some of the ratios of sugar and lemon juice to see what I think about the flavor. Trying to go with as little sugar as I can, but still getting the right flavor and um, just ratios in general. Because, you know, when especially if you're gonna water bath can, you wanna make sure zucchini is not an acidic plant, so it does need, that's the purpose of having the sugar and the lemon juice in there. And I do plan on putting a video together and I will share with you my recipes that I used once I do that. I just have to work with it a little bit first before I can share this since I've never done it and I like to do things my own way. And so more about zucchini, by the way, is I had posted a photo in the community section of me making a grilled cheese sandwich using zucchini in place of the bread and a lot of people were asking for a recipe, which kind of struck me funny because grilled cheese is grilled cheese. The only difference is I was using the slices of zucchini. However, I should say I am doing it slightly different than I would grilled cheese with bread. And that is because of, well, the, the zucchini, what it is. So what I found best to do is you can use butter, you can use almond oil. I've been kind of doing the almond oil lately. I'm really liking the flavor of that with that. I slice them about that thick. So about a half inch or so thick is how I like my slices, but it's gonna be totally up to you. And then what I do is, because the cheese can melt really quickly, is I actually grill both sides of each slice of the zucchini first. That way you can get that little bit of brownness on each side too to add more flavor. Then once I get it to where I want it, I put my cheese on there. I like to throw in a little hot sauce on top of that then put the other slice of zucchini already grilled on top of that and then turn the heat down a little bit just enough so that cheese can melt now it is a little easier to eat it with a fork when it comes to that because the cheese doesn't stick to the zucchini slices the way it will bread so you might want to eat it with a fork but you could also let it cool down to where it solidifies just enough but it's still warm where you can pick it up with your fingers it's all a matter of choice but i do prefer to eat it with a fork and and if you're interested in more of the many uses for zucchini, I do have another video I did this last year trying to squeeze all the different ideas in there that I could think of and still forgot some like I knew I would. But I'll link to that video down below in case you're interested. And then speaking of squash in general, you can see back here I have a spaghetti squash and you're probably wondering why would I pick a, zucchini, a spaghetti squash when it was still that young and you can see the color isn't even fully yellow like it should be well <laughs> here's what happened my spaghetti squash is doing excellent but that was the first one there that had come in and it, I had hand pollinated it and the whole bit and what had happened was I found that it was starting somewhere here I don't even know if I can find the spot but it was starting it was going to start growing through the cattle panel well that had happened to me and i almost didn't think i was going to get the spaghetti squash out of the cattle panel without having to cut it first and so what i did was i just pulled it out of that what had happened is it had already got used to the weight of the spaghetti squash being on the cattle panel and kind of in it so that after i pulled it out away it hung there for a little bit on the plant but when I went and I was watering, I heard this thump and walked around and found this had fallen to the ground. So it might be good as is. I'm just going to let it sit and see if it will mature well enough on its own. I think it should. I had to pick some squash when it wasn't fully ripe yet because of the way it was taking so long and the weather was really starting to get cold and brought it in and it did ripen up on its own squash is really good about that so that's what i'm going to do i was so mad when that happened because it could have possibly got even bigger than that it's a pretty good size spaghetti squash but i think it would have got bigger had i left it alone so i should have just left it so here was my lesson is that it would be better to let it grow through the cattle panel and cut it off if i have to this is my hypothesis is that the stem, see as the squash is growing, the stem is strengthening up in order to, all, you know, all parts that are holding that squash on there, according to the, the heaviness of it, 
as it's growing but because it was resting in on the cattle panel it didn't have time to fully strengthen up to hold on to the full weight of that so once all the full weight was put on the stem off it came so just a little lesson i learned <laughs> And I thought I would pass on to you. But anyway, yes, the, the spaghetti squash is doing good. I am getting some pumpkins. That first pumpkin I got, by the way, was actually outside the cattle panel and was down so low. It was it got to be that big. It's a pie pumpkin, and they're only they usually only get about this big. Well, this one got that big. It was another one I'd hand pollinated. Well, the chickens found it and totally hollowed out the inside of it. It's still hanging there. I figure I'll let them finish it off, the little stinkers. But yeah. So <laughs> I was hoping they wouldn't find it, that the big leaves, and they did hide it for a while, but all it takes is one chicken to find it. Thankfully, the rest of them are either too high up or on the inside of the candle panel archway that they won't be able to get to. It. So far, it's the pumpkins and spaghetti squash are doing best. I'm not sure that I'll see much on the orange butternut squash. It didn't do great for me before, and we'll see. We'll just see how it does. Other things that are coming along really good is, you remember, some of you might remember, I am trying the little mini red bell peppers where they're actually, they're this big and they're actually taking shape and look like little mini bell peppers. They're not red yet, they got a ways to go. But they're pretty cute, so we'll see how they do. I only have a couple of plants because I just wanted to try them. But my Chinese Five Color are doing better this year than they did last year. The year before last, the first year I grew them, they did great. But last year was such a cold, cold year, cold summer, even colder than this summer has been, that they, um, they just didn't do super great. I did get some, but not as many as I did the year before. But this year, they're looking really great. And that also could be because this year's plants are all from the seed that I saved from last year, all from one little tiny pepper. Uh, I, that could be another reason why they're doing better is they're more, these are the ones that are more acclimated where last, the first year was directly from a packet. And then last year was also the remainder of the seed from that same packet, not from seed that I saved before. So whenever you're trying to acclimate a plant, you'll find even if you only get one plant and you really want to keep that, you only get a couple of fruit from it, keep the seed from it and try it again the next year because even if it didn't grow great for you the first year it might do really good for you if you save that seed and then try it again next year because now it's going to be more acclimated and it can sometimes take two to three years for certain vegetation to fully acclimate to your area i had a little bit of a hard time really getting my marshmallow started here but once I finally got a couple of good plants and after those sat in the ground for a couple of years, they did flower and get seed every year. But it took a couple of years for it to get to the point where now I have marshmallow plants that come up all over the place from the seed that falls from those marshmallow plants. It took a few years for it to actually do that. But now that what that tells me is my plants are fully acclimated to this area so that the seed has no problem just falling to the ground and then growing new plants the next year. So then a couple of the things I did was I managed to get a batch of green beans uh, canned up before the wedding. And I was hoping I'd get enough to get at least one batch canned up and have that done in be behind me. I might can up a few more jars as I have a few more spaces, but I would have to can that with something else. So I'll wait till I have something else to can. Hopefully I'll have enough beans that are young enough I can pick at that time and just fill up a few more jars but most of the rest of the beans are going to be allowed to mature to for using as a shelling bean and or to be to continue putting up on my store for those who are interested and those are the runner beans it's actually a mix of runner beans it has the sunset runner with which has the peach flowers not as many of those i'm hoping this year i'll have a more equal balance in the seed because I, I noticed I have a lot more Sunset Runner that did well for me this year. And then the regular Scarlet Runner, which is a deep orange red blossom. And then the Barnside Sweet Runner, which is very similar to the Scarlet Runner, just as bigger. And anyway, they're my favorite be beans. For me personally, I have found not only they're the most beautiful to grow because they add so much color to the garden, but they're the most prolific bean that I've grown yet. I've grown several different types of beans. Some won't grow for me at all, but those ones I can always depend on. In fact, I gave some seed to the neighbor last year and he's just got a crud load of them that he also decided to put on cattle panels and they're doing beautifully. So they love it here in rain country. So if you live in a colder, wetter type climate, I do recommend those runner beans.
And I got a lot of tomatoes coming in. These are, I believe these are the purple ones. And I, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the purple heirloom ones and the black brandy wines. Usually though, the purple ones are a little more wrinkly, just have a little more interest to them and shape. Whereas the black brandy wines tend to be a little bit smoother, but their color looks very much the same. So it's funny that one is considered a black one and the other one's considered purple, but they all look the same. And then these are also considered a black tomato. These are the black vernissage. I love these. They're heavy producers and they're the ones that always come on first. So they're really great to just eat right off the plant or add to salads. And I'll be just taking all that I have. I have some Romas and I'll be starting to can those up. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention this one. I was going to mention it earlier. I don't have it out here anymore, but the rhubarb wine. I actually have a video that I shot a, a few days ago uh, before the wedding and it'll be coming out. It's a how-to video. It's already set, published to come out, but I want to give you even more of an update on that here and then be watching for that video to come out. So initially I was really concerned that the rhubarb wine, I wasn't going to like it because of the salty flavor that it had, which I thought was really odd because rhubarb has very, very little natural sodium in it. I looked it up to be sure. And for whatever reason, once you press it into a juice, it seems to have this salty type flavor, which you might think for a wine or even a cider just doesn't sound good. Well, it was good. It was just different, but it gave me an idea. And so what I decided to do was to take some, and I experimented for a little bit, added some lime juice to it and some honey to kind of, the honey was for the purpose of adding just a touch of sweetness, but also to counteract that more salty flavor in the rhubarb. And it wasn't the fermentation process that gave it that flavor because it tasted like that in the fresh juice straight from the plants. So what I ended up doing was basically making what I ended up calling a rhubarb margarita wine. And it was a hit. Everybody that tried it loved it. I went ahead and served it at the rehearsal dinner and then again at the family hangout that we had here on Saturday. And the family loved it. They thought it was absolutely delicious. And it does have a very nice flavor where you do kind of have that margarita flavor. It's a little different, but it's very similar. So I actually am freezing up a lot more rhubarb. Watch for that recipe coming out because I give the ratios and explain how I made the wine, how I pressed out the rhubarb but even if all you do right now if you still have rhubarb coming in chop it up and freeze it and then it will be ready because the freezing process does a lot to help make it easy to juice that rhubarb and if you don't have a cider press i do recommend getting one they can be a little bit expensive or even making one because when you're talking about pressing out apples for juice or even the rhubarb the cider press is going to work a lot quicker in fact it was a lot easier to use on the rhubarb than it was on the apples and I'm sure part of that too was simply because I had froze the rhubarb first and I didn't do that with the apples but anyway uh, it is recommended but there are other ways you can press it out if you can't afford to buy or make a apple pr or a cider press yourself and what I'll do also is link back to my old video I did a couple years ago on the cider press that I have and how to use it and it, it works great I thought I think it was a great investment it's not super expensive but it's not cheap either so anyway that's it for the this and that for this week so be watching for the video coming out eventually on the uh, zucchini pineapple zucchini black cherry zucchini assuming of course it turns out as good as I hope it does and then again, the, the rhubarb wine one. And go ahead and share with us down below, how's your garden doing? What's doing really good for you this year? Are you doing anything different with those things? Etc. Etc. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.